Well, hiya kids, and welcome to our kids slot here this morning on this Good Friday. Today, we're going to be thinking about a few things. Passover from the night before, Good Friday, and Easter Day. And we're going to have some talks, maybe a little video from Sophie with an Easter garden, and maybe a song at the end. So keep watching. It's great to have you with us. And let's find out some more. I wonder whether you have one of these at home. It's a yo-yo. I don't have one here and I can't go and get one from the shops at home because we're in lockdown. But you may have one of these at home, or you certainly may have played with one. It's a yo-yo. People can do all sorts of tricks with yo-yos, but the main thing is that a yo-yo goes up and it goes down. And that's a bit like us sometimes in life. We can have ups and downs. We can be feeling really good one day and feeling very poorly another day. We can do some fantastic things and do some not so good things. We can be honest one day and not honest another day. And that's just like life is at the moment, isn't it? Lots of ups and downs. And I wanted to talk to us about Passover. And that's a little bit like the Passover story with Pharaoh. You see, Jesus, when he was alive, celebrated the Passover every year. And the Jews still do today. And it goes back to the Exodus. Thousands of years before Jesus, the Jews were in Egypt, they were slaves, and God sent Moses to tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Now Pharaoh didn't like that, and he said, no. So God said to, to Moses, tell Pharaoh that I will send a plague. And God had to send several plagues. And each time he sent a plague, it was worse than the one before. And each time he sent a plague, Pharaoh said, OK, stop it and I'll let your people go. But when God took the plague away, Pharaoh changed his mind. It was like up and down, like a yo-yo. His mind was, I'll let your people go, then no, I'll let your people go, then no. All the plagues that God sent. The first one was blood. He turned the Nile, the big river Nile, into blood so they couldn't drink the water. The second one was frogs. Frogs came up out of the water, covered the whole land in the houses and everywhere. Frogs. Ooh. Don't know if you like frogs, but imagine them all being in your house and your garden. Ooh. Blood, frogs. The third plague was gnats. Tiny little gnats, nice and things getting everywhere. Imagine them. Ooh. All itchy and horrible. Gnats. Next one, flies. Quite a big fly, looks like a friendly fly, but flies, you don't like them, they're a bit, they carry disease and ooh, horrible. Flies. Next one got a bit worse, and God made all the animals in Egypt die. Because Pharaoh wouldn't listen. He kept saying no, he had chances, all the animals dead. Next one. Boils. Imagine having lots of boils all over your skin. Horrible, horrible, horrible things. One, two, three, four, five. That's the sixth one. The seventh one was hail. Not just little bits of hail, but giant hailstorms. Hail that rained down and killed the crops, killed the, the, some of the animals that were left, and really was nasty. Couldn't go outside at all. Hail. Then locusts, any of the crops that were left, loads of locusts, swarms and swarms that covered the land and ate all the crops. They didn't have much else to eat. Locusts. Then, quite a nasty one, darkness. Darkness covered the entire land, not just at night, but during day and it was dark. If you close your eyes and you can't see a thing, imagine trying to live like that. Some people are blind. But imagine if you, if that's brand new to you and you can't do anything, you're not ready for it. You don't have a guide dog or anything like that. The whole land was dark. Darkness. They couldn't do anything. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine plagues. 
Every time Pharaoh said, take this away and I'll let your people go. And every time God took it away, he changed his mind and said no. He's had nine warnings. In the end, God said, this is the final plague, the worst one. Because Pharaoh has not listened, I am going to send death. And I'm going to send death to all the firstborn in Egypt. And I'm going to send an angel of death over the land. But he said to Moses, tell the people, the Hebrews, my people, that they have to do something. They have to get a lamb, a spotless lamb, a lamb that has no blemishes, no spots, no, no damage to it at all, looks pure white. They are to sacrifice that lamb and take some of its blood. And with that blood, you are to paint that blood over the doorposts and the lintels of your home. A bit like this. And then go inside your home and stay in, because tonight I'm sending the angel of death to go over the whole land. And I will go into every house, and the firstborn I will take, they will die. But if you do as I say, and you have sacrificed, and you do put the blood over the lintels and the doorposts, I won't send the angel of death into that house, and that house will be safe. And that's what happened. God sent the angel of death. All the Israelites obeyed what God did. They killed the, the lamb. They sacrificed it. They had a meal with that lamb. And the blood they used and put it over the doorposts and the lintels. So they were saved. The Egyptians, though, lost all of the firstborn in their families. And that happened to the animals, too. Yeah. Now, that's quite a nasty thing, really, isn't it? But you see, God had given the Egyptians so many chances. And Pharaoh, the king, had kept saying no. Now Jesus celebrated Passover with the Jews every year. Every year they had a special meal together and they remembered what God had done in saving the people from the angel of death and taking the Israelites out of slavery. And they still do celebrate that. But on the night before Jesus was betrayed, the night before he was taken away and crucified on Good Friday, Jesus was celebrating this Passover meal with his disciples. And he changed it. He changed it and he took the bread and he said, this is going to be me who is broken for you, not just this bread. The disciples didn't really understand what he was saying. And then he took the wine and said, this is going to be like my blood that is spilt for you. And you see, back in Exodus, the very first Passover, when the angel of death came, they used a spotless lamb. And Jesus, when he died on the cross, was a spotless lamb, a sacrifice. He was the only one who had no sin. And so we as Christians today celebrate that in communion, or the Lord's Supper, or the Lord's Table. And when we have that, when we have communion together, we celebrate that Jesus was the sacrifice, his body and his blood. And that's why we can remember the Passover, but particularly Jesus and what he has done for us. Uh, welcome to my back garden and normally on Good Friday we get all the children together and while we have a reflective service in church we make Easter gardens and we normally run around and have quite a busy time actually and um, so we're going to really miss doing that this year so we are going to make an Easter garden together and we'll do it as a bit of a step-by-step -step process so you could go and gather some bits and make your own Easter garden at home this afternoon or maybe tomorrow. So we're going to get started. What do you need to make an Easter garden? So we have got gardening gloves because we need to think about safety, of course, especially when we're doing this with children. We've got some sticks that we're going to make some crosses with. We've got some stones to make a path. 
we've got leaves and um, we've got moss we've got some little plant pots to make our tomb and um, basically just go and have a look and see what inspires you we are going to use a tough tray but you can use a shoe box you can use a shoe box lid you can use a plant germinator tray or a tray that would go underneath a plant just find something that you can create a little easter garden in and um yeah see you later i am going to make a car that's going to go down here for when jesus rode into jerusalem and everyone shouted hosanna hosanna your easter garden will tell different parts of the easter story and um Sometimes that bit isn't necessarily in an Easter garden, so we're going to make different zones. And Faith has got some flowers that she is going to add to it. But we need to get the mud in there first. So make sure you've got your gloves on. And um, yeah, I've actually never made an Easter garden before. Claire always makes Easter gardens, and all of the children always make Easter gardens. Uh, so this is my first time actually making Easter gardens. Are you going to come and put some of these mud in? So, I've made a path going into my term, and this is my term. Um, I'm starting to create over here a zone where I'm going to put my crosses. I've got some of Annie's homemade Play-Doh. Uh, thank you, Annie, for that. And it smells good as well. And so I'm going to put my crosses here. And then this is going to be the tomb area. So I've got some moss over here. Um, read the Bible as we're doing it. We're going to talk through in a minute the story and what happened. Um, you can get the kids to make some little flags um, with scripture on. So we've got Luke 24, verse 5 here. And um, it's going to go on our tomb saying, why are you looking for the living amongst the dead so that's going to go out there but you could write lots of little scriptures and put them around your easter garden we think about jesus having the last supper breaking the bread and drinking the wine saying do this in remembrance that's where we go and we have our communion and we remember jesus and um, he sat and had his his supper with his friends um, and said to them you know this was the last time he was going to be with them in this way um judas betrayed him so i'm making the garden of gethsemane here and uh, they've got really exotic tall trees because of course i'm using little people um because i imagine it would have been full of beautiful things we're using the play-doh just to help things stand up and then i'm just going to uh kind of bury it <coughs> with the compost like this Faith, where are your daffodils? Earlier, so this is quite a nice thing. Go and gather some sticks, get some twine. If you've got older children, they can sit and make these crosses. And um, obviously, we've got three crosses. Um, I'm going to put the big one in the middle for Jesus, and then we've got the two either side for the people who were crucified with him. With some of the compost is there. So making an Easter garden traditionally is a way to tell children the story of Easter. Um, so you'd often in smaller gardens just have the area of the crucifixion and then you would have the tomb area. Um, so we've found a nice round stone that we're going to put in front of there. So this is my, uh, my street and somewhere I have a donkey. Here we go, a donkey. And this is going to be Jesus. And um, last week we remembered that Jesus rode in on a donkey and everyone waved their palms and they shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna. And uh, so this is what's happening here. I'm just going to put those there for now. And then they can move round as we tell the story. On Good Friday, we remember that. And the good news is the story doesn't end there, which is why we call it Good Friday. But we are going to carry on the story in our Easter garden. 
So Jesus is feeling really troubled and he goes into the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. And um, this is our Jesus. We're going to attach to the website, um, or if you look at this on Facebook, we'll put some little cut up pictures so you could print those out and use them in your own Easter garden or find some Lego people. This is Happy Land character. So Jesus goes into the garden and he prays. And he prays, you know, not my will, but yours. If this cup can be taken from me. Um, but we know that this was the will of God. I captured all the areas in the garden. You know, you could actually, um, you could do like a last supper table. And um, you could have some soldiers that come and they take Jesus and they arrest him. We hear stories of Jesus being mocked. Um, and they put a crown upon his head. Um, I'm conscious of different ages watching this today, so we're not going to talk too much about it. But what we do know is that Jesus was taken to the cross and he was nailed to the cross. And when we sign in sign language in Makaton, Jesus, that is Jesus. And that is because we remember the nails going through him as he was put on the cross. And it's a very sad time. So we're going to put our Jesus there. As we make our Easter garden, some of the questions that we can think about is, how must Jesus have felt? How must his friends have felt? You know, I wonder how they felt when they saw Jesus die. I wonder how the crowds felt. You know, Jesus had come, he was king of kings. And there he was dying on the cross. Was that everything just over? Was it finished? You know, how, how did he feel? How did everybody feel? Jesus's body was taken and it was placed inside the tomb. And a big stone was moved in front of it. And the stone we remember being like an egg shape, which is why we have Easter eggs. Jesus' friends, Mary Magdalene, went the next day to the tomb. And the donkey apparently is going to. <laughs> We're really surprised because it was empty. And our flag says, why are you looking in the place of the dead for the living? And an angel, two angels appeared and spoke to Mary and the other women and said this. They said that Jesus was alive. The tomb was empty. We're so surprised. They ran back to tell everybody, all the disciples, that Jesus was alive. Jesus is alive. The good news that we celebrate on Easter Sunday is that Jesus is alive. The tomb is empty. And we normally sing happy day in our Easter celebration service because we remember it is a happy day that Jesus is alive, that the story didn't finish with him dying on the cross. The good news is that Jesus is alive and Jesus is with us. And now more than ever, do we want a need to put our hope in Jesus? So however we're feeling today, uh, imagine how Jesus felt on the cross when he died for us, how his friends felt, that fear, that anxiety, but it was all taken away by the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. So put your hope today in Jesus. Put your hope in God. Give all your anxieties, all your stresses to God. And remember that he is here for us. Well, thank you to Sophie for that video of their Easter garden. Maybe you can have a go at home. We're going to pray and then we're going to sing a song at the end. So right where we are, let's pray. Close our eyes. Dear God, we thank you for sending Jesus. We thank you that he died on the cross for our sins. But we thank you even more that he rose again and we're able to celebrate that in two days' time. And so that one day we can be with you in heaven. And together, Amen! Right. We're going to sing a song now. It's a new song that I don't think we've sung before. And there's a few little actions. So I'm just going to talk you through the actions now. And then we'll have the song. It's called Glory and Honour by Doug Hawley. And the actions go like this. Glory and honour to you we bring. Beautiful Saviour, your praise we sing. Heaven bows down and worships your name, God of creation, we praise. And then there's a little bit in the middle where we do honour the King, honour the King, honour the King of Kings.
Enjoy this song, see if you can join in with the actors together. See you next time. Stop.